Well, hey there everyone, Aaron here. Welcome to another episode of Gideon's Tactical. Today, I wanna do a video on building a survival kit or bug out bag kit in an ammo can. I picked this up at Walmart for about $7. Nice little kit here. This is designed to just hold single stack 50 rounds of pistol ammo. So it's one of the smaller, you know, ammo boxes you can purchase out there. And I wanted to show you that you can build a survival kit with a little ammo can like this. It's very simple, very easy, you know, and it's a little bit of different idea versus, you know, putting it in a survival backpack. And what's awesome is this will easily fit in any backpack, you know, uh, that you may own. And it's awesome because it keeps all of your gear in one location. And then you can put it in your bag or you can put it in your closet. You can put it under the seat in your car or in your back trunk. And then you don't have to think about it, worry about it. And it's just kind of a different idea over putting it in an actual backpack and I like this idea a little bit better actually because it's all in one place I don't have to go hmm where did I put the fire steel in the bag and where was my food and where was this it's all boom right here it's cheap inexpensive and uh, a fun idea so this is the smaller version I'm sure we'll do some I'll buy some different size ones in the future and you can get a lot of different stuff in in an ammo can like this so let me show you what I have put inside here and kind of give you some ideas on building your own ammo can survival kit What's nice about this little ammo box here too is that it's plastic so it's lightweight. It does have a good, you know, latch there with a brass loop and it has a hole for a lock. You know, if you did want to put some sensitive stuff in here and you didn't want your kids getting into it or something like that, you could get a little lock and put it through there. And it has a water resistant O-ring. So it's not waterproof, but it'll des definitely help against either precipitation or other things like that. And it is made in the US. So let's go ahead, pop the top. And we will see what we got inside. All right, so the first thing that we got here is my emergency medical kit. Just some basic stuff in there. You know, I got Neosporin, got uh, rubbing alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, and a lot of different painkillers as well as, you know, pads and different things like that for uh, and medical bandages for a medical situation. And I'm de designing this more for just one person. You could probably get two people and take care of two people with this kit. But, uh, you know, this is more designed just for me and my car and that's probably where I'm going to be sto storing this thing. So then I uh, have a cliff bar, you know, just kind of give me some energy and this would be probably like a 24 hour, maybe 48 hour, you know, situation. This isn't going to be, you know, hey, I'm going to go survive for a month with this little uh, uh, case because guys, survival is not fun. Survival is painful. Survival sucks. And survival, you know, at the end of it, you're barely able to crawl out alive. So survival is not something fun and like, yeah, I love surviving. Uh, you know, that's something you can practice, you know, it's techniques you can, you know, hone your skills when you go out camping and maybe do you know a training exercise like that but overall i mean survival is not fun to do so i uh, got some food there like i said then i have this is really cool i'm going to do a separate review on this coming soon uh this the sol which stands for survive outdoors longer little medical kit is what this one is called this is the survival medical kit you guys can see right there. It comes with a lot of different stuff in here, which was really cool. So I'll just kind of go through it. I'm not going to open it all up and bust it out. But basically, uh, what it comes with is a seven foot long by five foot long emergency blanket. Comes with a fire steel, comes with some tinder, uh, comes with an emergency whistle, comes with a button compass. So that's very important. Comes with uh, some duct tape, comes with survival instructions, uh, two antiseptic towelettes, one. Uh, two pack ibuprofen, triple antibiotic ointment, one package, a bandage, one bandage, one one inch by three inch bandage, and uh, some safety pins. So there's a lot of stuff in here. I think I paid like $10 for this thing. It's totally worth it. I'll give you guys um, a demonstration in the future of what you get in there. But again, so I mean, you're getting, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, in this kit, you're getting a survival whistle. You're getting a spark thrower. This thing's awesome. I've used it to start several fires really cool got little tinder pods in there that's awesome this will, these things light like crazy and burn forever a button compass so that's really good that that has that in there and then a survival blanket that's really big which is good so you could definitely get two people in that survival blanket as well so there's that then as we move along here i have a phoenix e21 flashlight real good quality flashlight there i love that phoenix e21 and uh, has a really good battery life so that's a really nice thing to throw in there then let's see what else we got over here. We got an easy lap sharpener. Now I prefer the work sharp sharpener field sharpening kit, but this thing is obviously lighter and thinner and I'm trying to make this a, you know, a really small little kit. So uh, this has coarse and fine diamond stones here. So this will be able to resharpen my knives that I have in here that you'll see in a second. Uh, this thing will run you about 20 bucks. 
like that a lot. Then I have duct tape that I have wrapped around uh, a used Starbucks gift card. So I just wrapped probably, I would say, maybe 10, 10 yards. Yeah, 10 yards of duct tape on that little guy. Nice and slim. Then I got my Leatherman Rebar. Great Leatherman tool. Pretty inexpensive, right around $40. Uh, you know, I'm going to get a good saw. I mean, excuse me, a good blade. You got files, you got screwdrivers. I have a little pocket saw so I can do some cutting if I need to. Uh, the pliers work really well. This is just a really good uh, budget multi-tool that I really like a lot. So, and something to note, this is totally random, but where is it? Um, when you're talking about multi-tools, now this doesn't have it where, you know, when it's closed, you can open it up with it still being closed. You have to open up the tool to get to the knife. But those other t type of tools, when you do that, the knife blade, when it's open, is down here. So you have this weird, you know, hump that you got to kind of get over. This is nice and straight like a normal pocket knife. So it's much more comfortable to do my cutting tasks and carving if I have to use this thing to do that type of stuff versus having the blade down here if it was one of those open ones, you know, where the blade's out here and you don't have to open the whole tool. So it's a little bit more cumbersome in your hand to open it up, but once it's locked into place, you got that lockback design, so it's not going to, you know, accidentally collapse on me. It's much more comfortable to have to do wood processing in particular. So I just wanted to kind of point that out there. That's another reason why I like the rebar a lot because of that feature. All right, let's see what else we got in here. All right, next you got to have a knife. I happen to have my. SK4 from Survive Knives, a great blade, really nice and strong. This is a 4.3 inch blade. That's about the size of knife you're gonna be able to get inside this. So, you know, like a Topps Bob. Obviously this is a super expensive blade. If you don't have the money or you don't wanna drop the money on that, Amora Companion would do great. This is a $14 knife. This will do almost everything that that other knife will do, except for probably some batoning and it won't throw sparks off the spine, but you know, that'll easily fit inside there. And this is even more lightweight. Another example would be the Mora Bushcraft Black. This one's gonna run you about $35. This one you can throw sparks off of. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit more ergonomic in your hand. This will also fit in there, no problem. So uh, those are just some other inexpensive options, but uh, about a four inch, you know, fixed blade will easily be able to fit inside this ammo can. Then we got 50 feet of paracord with a, zip, with a plastic bag. I always try and keep the plastic bags on my stuff, not only just to maintain them, but I can use those plastic bags for other things if the crap hits the fan. Then we have here a ton of different options for starting a fire. Uh, I have a waterproof match um, little packet here came with 25 matches. This was a dollar at Walmart. I've used this before. It is awesome. Works really well, and it does have a little fire steel on the bottom of it. This thing's awesome. Then I have another uh, sole uh, fire uh, match kit with some tinder inside there. Then I got the Bear Grylls um, fire steel from Gerber. This thing works awesome. Got a review out on that. Then I got a mini Bic lighter. So there's a ton plus that other wheel that you saw earlier. So I mean, there's a ton of different ways for me to start fire and I got Tinder in there as well. Then I got some Cottonelle hand wipes wet ones. So that's something that a lot of people forget is hygiene, you know, particularly if you got to be out there for a while. Hygiene, you, you can get sick, you can get irritations on your feet, um, you know, you got to obviously take care of yourself when you're going to the restroom, whatever. This is very important, cleaning out wounds. Uh, it's very good to get, you know, a, a pack of wet ones and use them for all sorts of different stuff. It's very important and I, I, I highly recommend getting something like that. Then I have just another Ziploc bag. I got a rain poncho in here and then another emergency blanket. So I got two emergency blankets in there and a rain poncho. Then since I can't get a really big knife in there, my second thing that I could do, you know, because I can only get the four inch fixed blade, is the Bajo Swedish made Laplander saw. This thing is awesome. Got a good blade on there. This thing is fantastic running at, I believe like $22 on Amazon really lightweight six ounces So it's not gonna make this kit heavy and I can cut down lots of branches limbs and do different things like that without having to have a big you know chopping either axe or knife so that's really nice and it's inexpensive which is a big plus as well then finally the water purification there's two options for that uh, i have a life straw down here in the bottom of it you could obviously do a life straw there's lots of different you know water kits water is very important the other option that you can do if i can get it out here should have had it prepared for you guys sorry is this is the full-size sawyer water purificator easily fits inside there and the full-size 64 ounce bag so that I can not only fill this up and carry it with me so I can take water with me You could do that too. Obviously, it's gonna be more expensive The life straw runs you around 20 this guy's gonna run you around 30 But it'll take up the same amount of room down in the bottom 
just uh, two different options there, two different price points for you. So it's all empty now. That is what you can fit inside this little ammo can. Let's go ahead and wrap up the video. All right, everybody. So you've seen all the different things that you can put inside this little ammo can. I mean, that could definitely, you know, keep you alive until you can get rescued or get to a particular place, you know, that you're trying to get to, you know, and find help or a road, you know, if you're on a back road trail or, you know, whatever, doing four wheeling on an ATV, you know, and that's just so small. It's a very lightweight and you could obviously throw that bot, this ammo can into a backpack, you know, or a pack or whatever. And then you have everything one place. You can pull it out, pop it open and get to whatever you need. And you're not fumbling through your pack or wondering where it is. Easy to put in a lot of different places, unobtrusive, you know, not obnoxious and uh, very easy to build a uh, small survival kit. Again, we'll be doing probably, a, uh, I'll buy different sizes. We'll get different things in there. So you can see, uh, you know, depending on what size of ammo can you buy, you can get a lot of different stuff inside an ammo can for a bug out bag slash survival kit. So I think, I hope that this video has helped you guys out. Thanks so much for watching. Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching this particular episode of Gideon's Tactical. Please subscribe, comment, like the videos, share the videos, and check out our Facebook page. You can find it on the YouTube homepage of Gideon's Tactical. Like our Facebook page where you'll get updates of upcoming videos. Uh, you'll get photos as well as upcoming gear, new gear releases, you know, that products and companies that uh, are released, as well as behind the scenes footage and bloopers that you'll never see make it to YouTube. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. Stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.